we are at the shores of the Karkina Strait, Jim, a historical place. Tell us something about the first visitors through this bay. Well, well Sam, it's, it's nice to be here. It's a real pleasure. Right behind us, you can see right over our shoulders, is what is called the Silver Gate. And uh, uh, it's where the bridges are located. And uh, in 1812, uh, Gabriel Moraga, the first European born in uh, Spanish California, uh, came up this area with an expedition to explore the interior of California. The process that brought Gabriel Moraga here, Captain Moraga, uh, began in uh, the uh, uh, 16th century, actually the 15th century. That far back. Oh yes. Remember that uh, an author, a Spanish author, see if I can get this right, Garci Rodriguez de Montalvo, uh, wrote a book called Las Surjas de Esplanade, and in it he talked about a mythical land of Khalifa that was populated by women that he called Amazons, and there was gold and beautiful women. Of course, this attracted the Spaniards. And also, there had leaked out from uh, the Americas stories of vast uh, civilizations and vast wealth. So, of course, Hernan Cortez came, he explored the uh, Mexico, what is now Mexico, and uh, they uh, crossed into Mexico City and conquered the Aztecs. There followed then the conqu Spanish conquest of Peru, also in search of gold. And then the Spanish discovered Potosi, which was a, almost a total mountain of pure silver. It was staggering the wealth. And on top of that, they discovered vanilla mm. and chocolate. And vanilla and chocolate particularly took Europe by storm. And I, if I might say, it then went to Japan and Asia as well. So uh, these products were extremely valuable to the Spanish. So they really didn't have a need to come north. They had found their wealth and their riches and they were fat and sassy. What happened was uh, uh, there were some expeditions that came up the California coast. And of course, Francisco de Ulla, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, 1539, uh, explored the uh, California coast. Didn't find uh, the port of San Francisco. The entrance to the harbor. No, I didn't find it. Then uh, in uh, 1542, Juan Rodriguez Gabriel explored the California coast and also didn't find the entrance to San Francisco Bay. He did find Monterey Bay. He found the coastal islands and he worked his way up. This is one of the things uh, that uh, became clear was that the currents and the winds actually go from north to south. So if you're coming from the south to the north, you're going into the currents, you're going into the w prevailing winds. And it's a lot tougher. That was, the Spanish took advantage of that in the Manila galleons. Starting in the 16th century, they had a galleon that left from Valparaiso, Peru, took to southern winds, trade winds to uh, China. And they traded with China. Now remember, Japan wasn't interested in trading with anybody but the Dutch. And they put the Dutch on a little island in Nagasaki Harbor. But the Chinese and the Indonesians were ready to trade. The galleon would load up with porcelains and other valuables and then come back on the northern route and then come down the California coast back to uh, uh, Valparaiso. So at any rate, uh, they continued exploring and then Sir Francis Drake came in. Now he completely upset the apple cart because what he was was on a voyage of discovery for Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, remember that the important thing about Queen Elizabeth I was stability. And she attracted explorers. They were looking for products. They were looking for riches. They were looking for markets and commerce. And so they, he explored what is now uh, the uh, California coast. And he went back to England, of course, and reported that I found this really great place and uh, on the west coast of the North American continent. Well, of course, <coughs> the Spanish had spies. 
And suddenly the Spanish crown realized that they needed to colonialize this area. And also they found out that the French had designs. The Italians, the Portuguese, everybody was looking to have colonies in the Pacific Ocean so that they could capitalize on the vast wealth of minerals and other uh, products that were here, particularly agriculture. So what happened was the Spanish crown and uh, of course had appointed the Council of the Indies. The Council of the Indies uh, in Madrid really ran the show in the Indies in what is now uh, the Western Hemisphere. And there, through a viceroy, um, and at that time it was Viceroy de Rey Moral, and uh, the viceroy in Morelia. Uh, in fact, his residence is still there, you can visit it. We ate dinner there one night. Hmm. And uh, so at any rate, uh, uh, through these uh, formal organizations, a series of expeditions were uh, sent out. The first one, of course, was the, uh, I've got to get this straight here. The first one was uh, the uh, Portola expedition. And they reached Monterey Bay. And uh, even today, the various campsites of the Portola expedition are uh, really uh, 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 state historical monuments. A question, Jim. Sure. Um, before Portola's expedition, are we to understand that Spaniards did not <coughs> physically put their foot on California soil? <coughs> That's not true. Well, Juan, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo was okay, here. Before that, yes, yes. And then uh, there was various Spanish groups that came up. A lot of them were bandidos. A lot of them were explorers. A lot of them were uh, individual buccaneers and uh, various people uh, that uh, were looking for riches. They didn't find it. But no settlement as such. No settlement. So then the Council of the Indies and the Viceroy set up a formal program for settlement. And the settlement had a series of pieces of parts, okay? And this was all legally done. This is all officially sanctioned and officially done. And it had a couple of different elements. The first element was the army <coughs> and the uh, various uh, presidios. So a series of presidios were started, in, first in San Diego, uh, then there was a Presidio in um, Ventura, a Presidio in Santa Barbara, Monterey, and then a Presidio in Yerba Buena, which is now San Francisco. Okay, these Presidios had to be linked, of course, so they had royal roads. And so you had the creation of the El Camino Real, or the King's Highway, which is a very fancy name for a bunch of mud sol and dusty in the summer, uh, choked in the winter uh, 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 tracks that ran from uh, north to south in California. And in fact, in the winter, in bad storms, you couldn't go between uh, Santa Barbara and Ventura up until about 1968. Ah. It, was, it was that late that the, the roads were finally built and at high tide you could drive that road. So the Presidio was like a fort in, in, the, in the desolate area. Exactly. And each Presidio had a Presidio Rancho, which was established to provide uh, food to the Presidio. Okay, then you had the missions. Now the missions were established by the Franciscans. Remember that a, about uh, 50, 100 years earlier, uh, the Pope had thrown the Jesuits out of the New World because he thought probably just that the Jesuits were going to start their own new uh, offshoot of the Catholic Church. And so he threw the Jesuits out and brought in the Franciscans. And the Franciscans established a uh, chain of missions up the, uh, up the California coast. They also had their ranchos. Okay. Now remember, just so you know this parenthetically, Rancho Solano, San Francisco Solano in Sonoma, right. was Mexican period, not Spanish period. Right. So it was a it was a Mexican rancho. Uh, so we we can talk uh, later about Rancho Soscal, but that's in the Mexican period. So what happened was the Spanish then uh, established mission ranchos. So then what you had is the presidios, you had the roads, 
linking them, you had the missions, you had then the ranchos. So then you had the pueblos, and the pueblos were formally formed under Mexican law. Excuse me, Spanish law. Spanish law. Yeah. Yes, and land rights were established under Spanish law. So you had, uh, then you had the pueblos being formed. And the first two pueblos were official pueblos, Los Angeles and San Jose. And Los Angeles was named after the river. Los Angeles River. Rio de Los Angeles. Okay, so the town Pueblo of Los Angeles was named after the Rio de Los Angeles. Okay. In San Jose, the Pueblo of San Jose was named after the mission. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, there's all kinds of stories. For example, in Los Angeles, the parish church was built using a uh, keg uh, paid for by using kegs of brandy that was brought over from Mission San Gabriel. So there was a lot of interplay back and forth. And of course, if you had the Pueblos, then you had to have ranchos to support these Pueblos. And the Pueblos were there for commerce. So this was all deliberate. It was not on accident. It was all planned out by the Viceroy. It was executed by the Army. It was executed by the Franciscans. And the Pueblos were uh, actually, it was an interesting thing, particularly Los Angeles, because they, put together a mixture of uh, freed black slaves, you had uh, uh, Spanish, you had some uh, mestizos, you had some uh, uh, descendants of the Aztecs that came together and, formed, and were the first uh, uh, residents of Los Angeles, okay? Yeah. Uh, Jim, to, to look at the larger picture from where I see the history of California, what, what were the while the Spaniards were establishing an order, a society, right. what were some major obstacles they were running? <laughs> well, okay, that's a very good question. Um, the first thing that appears in the, the letters and the books of uh, Herman Cortez, and he wrote a series of letters, reports actually, to the, to the crown in, in Madrid. And I've actually been to that palace impressive place. And I've been to the Council of the Indies. It's still there. The library is still there and the collection of documents is still there. <clears throat> and they, and they, they treasure it. Okay, so let's talk about that because the first thing that pops up on Hernan Cortez's letters is the rattlesnakes. They had <laughs> never seen rattlesnakes before. And they were dangerous. California rattlesnakes. Well, in that case, it, it was Mexico. Oh, Mexico. Okay. But, okay, so th then they had, uh, uh, then they had these strange plants. And, uh, for example, cacti that would uh, uh, scratch them. They would get infected. And uh, then they had the mountains. In the case of Cortez, uh, he uh, uh, picked a fight with the Aztecs and got in a bloody, vicious, war with the Aztecs. Uh, and basically he, uh, uh, he was able to use a small number of Spaniards to, contact, con to conquest a larger number of Aztecs uh, for a lot of reasons. Primarily having to do with the Spanish uh, military training, their ability to maneuver, they had horses, and they had, of course, Toledo steel. Going north, there was a lot of obstacles. First of all, remember the currents went south, or yes, south. Yes. Remember the prevailing winds went north, south. Okay. Uh, you had uh, a tremendous number of mountain ranges. You had the highest mountain range in the western, in the United, in the continental United States, not counting Alaska. Huge mountain ranges, and you had a lot of mountains. You had vast areas of desert, and this was mean, tough desert rough desert, no water, blazing suns, you had to deal with the cacti, you had to deal with coyotes, mountain lions, bears. Uh, and How about the encounters with the Native Americans? Well, the encounters with the Native Americans were for the most part peaceful. You have to realize that <coughs> in the years uh, preceding and during the Portola expedition, uh, the Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo expedition, a series of epidemics went through California. And probably somewhere between 90 and 95 percent of the Native American population of what is now California died. About th probably three, maybe four uh, epidemics of smallpox, measles, rubella, 
all of these diseases that Europeans had developed a certain resistance to, the Indians were susceptible to, and it killed them. So by the time the Spaniards came to California, uh, with the exception of the Paiutes, such a natural abundance of agriculture in the state of California that they didn't need to be violent with each other. So they lived off the nature as, as best as they could. Well, they did a beautiful job living yeah. off of nature. They actually, with the ecology of Exactly. The There's evidence that they actually, for example, propagated uh, various uh, patches of, uh, huge patches of various uh, types of uh, vegetation. vegetation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so. The, in, the Native Americans were not really a problem for them. The problem was the topography. The problem was the natural animals, the coyotes, the mountain lions, uh, thousands of bears, thousands of coyotes and mountain lions. It was a wild country. It was a wild country, and then the ever-present rattlesnakes, which just yeah. drove the Spaniards nuts. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you see this over again in reports, over again in letters. Now, the Aztecs worshipped them. And there is just north of uh, downtown Mexico City an entire Aztec tem temple, which is devoted to the rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes, oh, yeah. Goodness. Wow. But they just the rattlesnakes. They just keep bringing this up in their letters and their reports. You know, <laughs> damn the rattlesnakes. You know, they said in Spanish. And uh, I can appreciate that. I was bit by a rattlesnake 20 years ago. I can appreciate the fact that it 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 what it did to them, considering yeah. that the the density of uh, the snakes and the coyotes and the mountain lions and all the other creatures. It was populated by grizzly bears. Grizzly bears did not back down. They would attack. Uh, the town of Los Osos, the bears. Thousands of bears lived down in that area <laughs> and just drove the Spaniards nuts. We take them for granted, but they are probably an enemy to behold. <laughs> oh, right. So the, the Native Americans had developed a symbiosis with the animals. In other words, they, uh, for example, uh, had uh, here in the Benicia area where we're standing, their two um, campsites uh, uh, were on a were adjacent to a swampy area, and were kind of semi-detached from the mainland, so that there was some protection uh, from the bears, from the coyotes, from the mountain lands. Okay, and. Uh, 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 but, uh, and in the San Joaquin Valley, you had these little islands, uh, and you can still see them. The remnants are still there, where they would live on during the summer uh, to stay away from the bears when the bears came down from the high country. A uh, little fast forward, Jim. Uh, I know there's a lot to be told here. This history is so rich. Um, as we look at the modern times, right. the question comes to the mind, you can look around and say Spaniards helped in the development of this land. Well, you know, yeah. I'm, the Spaniards, of course, were here. The Spaniards set up the initial roads, the initial towns, the initial pueblos, uh, the initial ranchos. And what we see is a tremendous Spanish heritage here, not just in names. I mean, Rancho Cucamonga, Rancho Canol, uh, Benicia is a, a Spanish name, Benicia. Yes. Uh, we have uh, Arcanus, the crabs. They used to live right. long here in, in great numbers, according to Platon Vallejo. That's, that, named that's how Carquinez Bridge was named. Yes, Carquinez Bridge. Right. Uh, we have uh, Vallejo, which is a Spanish name. We have San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, Buenaventura, Los Angeles, San Jose. San Francisco, oh, no. right. named after St. Francis of de Assisi, of course, yes. and the Franciscans. So, uh, and Yerba Buena is a previous name, Alcatraz. Right. I mean, we have just the names, we have the maps, we have the basic outline of the roads. You can still, to this day, uh, go to uh, various points along uh, the California coast and see the original El Camino Real, the, the ruts. You can see yes. them right there. And you can visit the missions, the pueblos. You can visit the uh, uh, the presidios. The most impressive presidio, I think, of all of them, is in Santa Barbara. And uh, you can visit uh, 
all of these sites. There are people such as myself who go around and visit all of them and visit all the adobes and uh, it makes terrific stories. And there are terrific stories that come out of it. There's the, 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 the novels like the Zorro story. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Don Diego. Uh, well, there are so much intermixing of the land, the people, and the legacy here. And the legacy and the people. Of the Spaniards. Right, exactly. And there's a lot of families in, in California that trace their lineage back to the Spaniards. Yes. To the original. For example, the Ortega family of Ortega Foods. They trace themselves back to um, Ortega who discovered uh, San Francisco Bay. General Vallejo, the city here, Vallejo City, Vallejo? Yes, is, is in fact, I read somewhere, has lineage to Spanish. Oh, well, he was Spanish. He was born a Spaniard. And uh, he Even was he was born in, in, in California. In California. He was a Creole. Right. Uh, and in uh, the 19th century, 18th century uh, pecking order uh, Creoles, uh, you had people who came from uh, the, uh, Europe and then their children, their pure-blooded children, were called Creoles. And it's actually a French word. And uh, uh, he was a Creole. He was born of uh, Spanish parents. And uh, he was born at the Presidio in San Francisco. And uh, Vallejo was an hombre de razón, a gente de razón. Um, he was a uh, intellectual. He was a very smart man. Uh, not just not just from breeding. He was a smart guy. He married well. His uh, daughters and sons married well. Uh, and. Uh, 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 particularly his uh, son-in-law Frisbee did well in developing uh, Vallejo and was a very accomplished attorney. Uh, we see even today uh, things like uh, the Indian lands that were uh, the lands the Spanish reserved a series of lands for the Indians and they were called rancherias and we still see rancherias here we still see uh, uh, we, we still see uh, the uh, ripples of uh, land laws and uh, 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 all kinds of uh, various influences. Wonderful, rich history of California. Oh, very. You know, and uh, it'll take me a while to absorb all the things that you brought up here, but uh, it's a great story. Oh, it's great. It's a great story, and, and it's a living story because we are still part of that land and the legacy of the earlier explorers. Exactly. And, and, and California, back then, 300, 400 years ago, was a desolate outland. It was uh, <laughs> desolate, at least as far as the Europeans were concerned. The, right. To the, the Native Americans, it was heaven. It was home. Yes. And then uh, the Europeans came and made it their heaven and their home, and that's what we are today. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.